everyone uh, welcome back to another episode of friday morning fuel i'm your host coach mary today we're going to be making a very simple very delicious uh nutrient packed charred corn salad so uh probably one of my favorite things about social media is a lot of the food recipes and trends that tend to go viral and i don't know about you guys but i'm always looking for more ways to pack in more vegetables and plants into my menus. And this one is a huge success. I have made this for a couple of weeks in a row now. It comes together very quickly and it is in the style of a marinated salad. So there's going to be a sauce that we make that as the salad just sits in it over the week, it just gets more and more flavor. So uh, let's go over a couple of things that we're going to be doing today. So I've got a couple of things with me here. I've got my two mixing bowls. So I have one container for my uh, salad to go in, a different bowl to mix my uh, sauce for afterwards. I've got a straining cup. I'm going to be using canned vegetables today. I have prepped a couple of things ahead of time, namely our onion, because I get very um, teary-eyed when chopping onions and I don't want it to take away from making the recipe. And I've also got some cilantro and some peppers and we'll be adding in a few more things like some spices and some cheese as well. All right, so first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my canned corn and this is a charred corn salad. There's a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, if you happen to have a blowtorch at home, you can use your little blowtorch to give it that nice crispy texture. You can do what we're going to do, which is get everything onto a pan and then put it under the broiler for just a couple of minutes. Or you could even use frozen corn. Sometimes our frozen vegetables also come in flavors like um, fire roasted or different styles. So that's what we're gonna be doing for that. I'm gonna be using canned corn. You could use fresh, you could use frozen. Um, can just works for simplicity's sake. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna get can onto, or corn, canned corn, excuse me. We're gonna get corn onto a baking sheet and pop that in the oven under the broiler. I'm gonna keep an eye on that because you guys know as things go under the broiler, they tend to cook very quickly. All right, quick little rinse. And then while our corn is going, I'm gonna start prepping some of our other vegetables that need to be chopped, like our peppers and our cilantro. All right, so baking sheet. I'm gonna spread my corn out on a non-stick baking sheet. If I wanted to, I could probably toss it with a little bit of olive oil, but um, not gonna do that today. All right, team, broiler is on high. We're gonna keep an eye on this. Should cook up pretty quickly, maybe in about a minute or two. All right, so prep work. We're gonna be chopping some cilantro. cilantro. We're also going to be chopping up half of a bell pepper. I went with orange just because I think it adds a nice little color pop, but you could use any bell pepper if you like some of the sweeter ones like the red bell pepper or the milder ones like a green bell pepper. Any of them will work. We're also going to be dicing two jalapenos. This was actually not in the original recipe. This is just something I like to add for a little bit of spice and a bit more flavor. All right, for my prep work today, since I'm handling spicy peppers, I'm gonna be wearing gloves. Again, just cause I'm gonna be touching a couple of different things. Okay. I'm gonna pop over and check on our corn real quick. All right. Corn is still doing good. All right, so I need half of my bell pepper. My bell pepper is one that has uh, split into thirds, so I'm gonna take just two thirds of this bell pepper. We're gonna slice it, we're gonna dice it, we're gonna add it into our bowl. 
So I'm taking my knife, making some thin slices. If you have one of those really cool um, slap chops where you don't have to do it by hand, uh, or with a knife, I should say, you could also use one of those. I used to have one of those a long time ago. Really enjoyed that for things like onions when I don't like chopping those. All right, so we've got our bell pepper thinly sliced here. We're gonna take that and dice it, so cutting it into just smaller pieces. All right, another time check on our corn. Good. So far, so good. Don't want to burn my corn. All right. Everything goes into one mixing bowl. So very few dishes needed for this recipe. Another huge plus. All right. So half a bell pepper. Check. Next, I'm going to do my jalapenos. I'm going to slice the tops. I'm going to slice them in half, removing the seeds and the flesh. There we go. All right, love using gloves when working with spicy stuff and also with raw meat. It makes it a lot easier, that's for sure. All right, two jalapenos. I have also tested this out with different peppers. I have grown some uh, Anaheims in my garden, so I've done it with Anaheim peppers as well. So I think you could easily swap out these peppers. And like I said, this was not in the original recipe. So if you are someone who does not particularly enjoy spicy stuff, you could omit this all together. Okay. Corn is still doing great. I'm going to dice up my jalapeno the same way I did with my bell pepper here. I'm just going to put it into, cut it into thin slices and then cut those slices into smaller pieces. There we go. All right, if you're somebody who enjoys cooking and you have your own nice cooking knives at home, Always a good idea to, every couple of months, have them sharpened. Sharp knives can make meal prep go a lot faster and give you more even pieces and cuts. <laughs> All right, my other jalapeno here is a bit more oddly shaped, so I'm going to do my best to cut that into thin strips. <laughs> Also, this jalapeno has turned red. It is still perfectly fine to eat. It is just part of the ripening process. And in fact, it can change the flavor a little bit as well. But just because a pepper has turned into a different color, that is still perfectly fine to eat. If it's starting to get wrinkly or you can see visible mold growing around it, then it's a time to throw it away. All right, jalapeno diced. Dice as best as we can. I'm not a pro chef, so I'm not gonna get those perfect little pieces. All right, let's check on our corn because I'm starting to smell it. Don't wanna make popcorn. Perfect, nice. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit longer with the corn. We're still keeping an eye on it. All right, next up, we're gonna go in with our cilantro. I'm gonna take about half of my bunch here. I'm gonna cut off the stems. You can still use cilantro stems for a lot of things. Okay, and then same thing, we are gonna do, we're gonna chop it up into smaller bits. So I'm going horizontally and vertically getting it into smaller pieces and then I'm going to switch to more of a 
rock and chop method to get it into those fine pieces. All right. Hope you guys are all having a good morning. If you're just now joining us, we are prepping up our charred corn salad. It really does start to smell like popcorn. <laughs> all right, cilantro is chopping up nicely. Smells so good. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't like cilantro, it's possible you could swap this out with oregano. It would also be a nice complementary spice. Or, excuse me. Okay. We're going to do another quick check on our corn, especially now that it's warming up. Cilantro is looking good. All right, we're really babying our corn this morning. All right, cilantro. We're just gonna add that into the bowl. And that's pretty much it for our chopped ingredients. We're gonna add in a few more canned vegetables. Perfect. All right, red onion. A recipe calls for one quarter of a red onion diced. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Red onion can go a long way in your dish. So I'm going to do about a quarter cup. Okay. Other ingredients that we're going to add to our marinated salad, we're going to add in diced tomatoes. I will easily admit I'm not great at dicing tomatoes, so I'm going to go in with canned tomatoes here. I know it's a cheat, but it also makes the prep and cleanup work a lot easier. I am going to drain and just do a quick rinse. Not too long of a rinse because these are some of the flavored ones like Rotel. This has more jalapeno and cilantro in it. Perfect. All right. In goes our diced tomatoes. And then perhaps the best ingredient of all is our beans. So this is a marinated bean salad. The original recipe calls for white beans. I personally like black beans, but again, I think just like with the peppers, you could interchange for a different kind of bean, depending on your preferences and tastes. All right, black beans, same thing. We're gonna drain and rinse. All right, corn is still doing good. We're gonna add our beans to our big bowl that has the whole mix. We'll check the corn one more time, and then we'll be ready to start making our sauce, our marinade, if you will. All right, in they go. All right, let's check on our corn. All right, I do think within about a minute or two, our corn will be ready to add. Last thing I'm gonna add to our mix team is a little bit of grated cotija cheese. It's very crumbly like a Parmesan. Has a nice mild flavor as well. Perfect. The original recipe calls for one quarter cup, but let's be real, it's cheese. You measure cheese with your heart. All right, so to catch us up into our giant bowl, we have added um, one can of black beans, one can of diced tomatoes, one half of a diced bell pepper, two diced jalapenos, 
half a bunch of chopped cilantro, and roughly a third cup of cotija cheese, and one quarter cup of red onion. Soon we're gonna be adding to that our corn will be the last ingredient, but for now we're gonna go ahead and switch and make our sauce. So this is probably the magical ingredient that brings it all together. You hear my corn popping? <laughs> all right. We're gonna take the corn out. I'm gonna let that cool for a little bit so that it doesn't melt our cheese. So for our sauce, we need a couple of ingredients in there as well. We're gonna be using Greek yogurt. You could also use mayonnaise depending on your preferences. Greek yogurt does tend to have a very tangy flavor. All right, um, we're gonna have a guest appearance really quick. My roommate is gonna enter the camera frame to grab his lunch. You're not grabbing your lunch? Okay, never mind then. All right, guest appearance later then. All right, so for our sauce, we're gonna be mixing some uh, Greek yogurt. We're gonna add in some lime juice and add in a little bit of salt and smoked paprika for some flavor. All right, you could totally buy pre-juiced limes. In fact, I usually keep a jar of lime juice in my fridge, but today we're gonna do it manually. All right, so my limes are a little hard. So what I'm doing is I'm taking them with my hand and I'm gently massaging by rolling it across my cutting board or my hard surface. This is gonna allow the flesh to release a little bit more juice. And last one here. So I have three limes in total. The lime juice we're gonna adjust to get the right consistency. Okay. Perfect. All right. First, we're gonna add in our Greek yogurt. About a half cup or so. Again, you could also use um, mayonnaise instead of Greek yogurt. Then it would really give a nice, um, like a lote style corn. That's one container of yogurt finished up. There we go. All right. Fresh container, we're gonna add a little bit more. All right, that's about my half cup of Greek yogurt here. Again, we don't wanna go too heavy with the yogurt or the mayonnaise. We want this to be a very like thin consistency sauce. All right, here we go. First lime. Mm. May not have massaged these enough. Good thing I got three of them. And good thing I have some lime juice in the fridge as well. I can use that if this is not thinned out enough. All right, so I went to Whole Foods last night to get these supplies. Grocery stores generally restock. I mean, they restock every night but especially like produce, that generally gets restocked, refinished around like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So it's possible that this um, crop of limes just is not ripe yet. But if you've ever done shopping on a weekday versus going on like a Friday or a Saturday, you'll notice different levels of ripeness. So things like bananas hit and miss depending on when you go by Friday they could be all green by Sunday they could be all yellow and brown all right this lime's a lemon it's a dud all right so I'm gonna do the best that I can and get as much out of these limes I've got one more here and I've got more lime juice in the fridge here if I need to thin it out a bit more. You could also add water to thin it out. 
man, these lines are just not, not great. Okay. Let's go into our spices. I've got salt and I've got smoked paprika. Regular paprika will also be fine. Just adds a nice little chili flavor to it. Yes, normally I would use my measuring spoons, but for today I'm just going to wing it. So about a half a teaspoon or so of smoked paprika. And then we're going to go in with about a tablespoon of salt. So for your salt team, it's always good to mix and then taste to determine if you need some more. All right, we're going to stir that up. All right, our corn has probably cooled down by now. We're going to add our corn to our mix. And we are almost finished. All right, let's go quick little taste test to see what else our sauce needs. It is really thick. I'm probably going to add some water to it here to thin it out. Okay, surprisingly very strong on the lime. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more paprika. Salt is actually perfect. That salt came in a little bit later on the tongue and taste. All right, we're gonna add a teensy bit of water. Probably the downside of using Greek yogurt is because of the way it is strained, it is extra thick. So mayonnaise might be an advantage here. There we go. All right, now we have a nice like runny consistency, which is what we want. Let's bring it all together now. Let's add in our corn. Okay. So my corn has a little bit of browning. That's our, our charred corn salsa. Salad, excuse me. There we go. Mm, that smells so good, you guys. It smells like popcorn. All right, then we're gonna add in our sauce. I've still got my gloves on, so I'm just gonna keep those on and mix by hand. If you're working this without gloves, a big wooden spoon would also suffice. All right. And that, guys, gals, and non-binary pals is going to be our charred corn salad packed full of fiber packed full of really good micronutrients like vitamin c hopefully you enjoyed today's episode i'm gonna leave the recipe in our show notes thank you guys for joining i'm gonna be eating this for the rest of the week and who knows maybe you enjoyed it and you'll try it out this weekend as well We'll see you guys next month for another episode of Friday Morning Fuel, first Friday of every month at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you.